Now that the House has passed Trump Care 2.0, which took the impossible task of making Trump Care even worse and somehow actually succeeding at that. Way to go. Now, Nancy Pelosi, on the heels of that, uh, you know, victory that's going to end up being a defeat, well, Nancy Pelosi is going to say, hey, hold my beer. I can do something even more stupid. According to Observer, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi recently reaffirmed that she would not be pushing for Medicare for all, but instead she would be pushing for the status quo. Vice News correspondent Evan McMorris Santoro, uh, who talked to Nancy Pelosi, said that she told him that single payer health care should not be designated as a solution for the federal government, but should instead be instituted in the states. Now, there are some issues with that, of course. Uh, it really only works well if it's a national health care system. Now, look, they're trying to do this in California, and God bless them for it, because I do think it will be a catalyst for the rest of the nation. But at the same time, this does need to be a national project, because the federal government, I think, can do this the best. Now, uh, again, she also says that the political reality is that Congress isn't ready for single payer. Not the American people, but Congress. Congress isn't ready. Really? Well, Nancy, who are you supposed to serve? I mean, you're in Congress. Congress is supposed to serve the people. It's supposed to serve their constituents, us. Now, how do the American people feel about single payer? Are they ready for it? Well, 2016 Gallup poll found that 58% of Americans favored replacing Obamacare with a federally funded health care system. Not with more market-based bullshit insurance, but an actual Medicare for All system. Another poll from Morning Consult Politico showed that a plurality of voters support a single-payer health care system where all Americans get their health insurance from one big government plan. Looks like the American people seem to be ready for single-payer. In fact, you even have a majority, I think, believe, uh, I believe it's 46% of Republicans versus 38% of Republicans that oppose single-payer. They're ready for it. Even Republicans, man. Look, and you know why? It's, it's not because this is a political issue or it should be a political issue. It's because this does what everybody wants. Everybody wants cheaper, affordable health care that is easier to manage. Okay? And that covers what they need it to cover when they need it covered. Okay? Uh, again, you want they want something affordable. They said, hey, Trump, Obamacare right now is unaffordable. We cannot afford it. Are you going to do something to make it cheaper? Oh, yes, I'm going to make it cheaper. I'm going, to leave, I'm going to bring the premiums down. Well, that's what Americans want. But they don't want to do it at the expense of people with pre-existing conditions. In fact, pre-existing conditions are incredibly popular within Obamacare. And most people despise Trump Care 2.0 and Trump Care because it hurt people with pre-existing conditions. They don't want to get cheaper health care at the expense of someone else. Who knew? Yes, most people seem to be in favor of not fucking over their fellow American, uh, unlike Congress. Which, that's all they want to do is fuck over other Americans so they can get an extra tax cut or, or, or a, a big check from giant corporations. Now, they also don't want to have to worry about losing their health insurance if they lose their job. Single payer does all that and more. And look, right now, you can't deny the numbers are there. We pay more than every other country for less care. More in healthcare costs, less in actual care. Why? Because we're paying for insurance company CEOs to rake in more profits, get uh, all these uh, benefits and bonuses and then advertising fees. Basically, we're paying for shit that doesn't actually go to our care. Well, we don't want to do that. We just want to pay for our own health care. Well, that's why it's called a single payer option or a single payer system, because we are the payer and we're the ones who get the benefits back that we pay in. Okay. Again, our system right now is a ripoff. It's a ripoff. And a lot of people know it. And a lot of people are not very happy with for-profit health insurance companies. But when you talk to people on Medicare, well, people on Medicare are incredibly happy with Medicare. That is why it's one of the most popular systems in America. You cannot say the same for health insurance. 
So why would Nancy Pelosi decide to not back single payer? Well, I think you all know the answer to that question. You have to follow the money. Of course, follow the money, follow the money. According to OpenSecrets.org, uh, which is uh, part of the Center for Responsive Politics, they looked at financial and lobbying disclosures and they found that, and I have a graphic for this. Let me bring that up. They found that health insurance companies or health professionals, by the way, are the number one donor to Nancy Pelosi, giving her $193,050. That's a lot of money. And then, of course, you have regular insurance company is the eighth highest donor to Nancy Pelosi. Now, this is, of course, uh, you have most of this from PACs uh, supported by big pharmaceutical companies, health insurance companies, and doctors groups that all really despise single payer. Gee, I wonder why Congress isn't ready yet. Maybe it's because a lot of them take that same money. That's what it is. They're not ready to hop off that gravy train. Now, while their constituents, of course, with these bills, with Obamacare, which was not perfect, which had its own issues, which uh, had high deductibles that a lot of people couldn't afford, um, and, and all the other different issues inherent with insurers that were leaving the marketplaces, uh, leaving the exchanges, look, these constituents continue to lose out on health care, and even some of them happen to die because they can't afford that health care. Look, we have a right-wing health care plan. Obamacare was the Republican plan uh, until they adopted this, this insane Trump care. Obamacare would have been great as an alternative to uh, or an alternative plan presented against a single payer Medicare for all, for all option. If only the Democrats had prevented or I'm sorry, had presented that option and had presented that bill and had them argue on the merits. And guess what? I guarantee that the American people would fall on the side of Medicare for all and choose the Democratic plan, but we didn't have a Democratic plan. We didn't have a left-wing uh, option because all we have is a corporate option and a Republican option, and that's essentially it. And look, this current crisis can be traced right back to the healthcare debate and President Obama not bringing forward an actual progressive healthcare plan. You see, Obamacare, as I said, it is a right-wing plan, it is Romney care, uh, and it is not perfect by all by all uh, uh, measures, right? It does leave a lot of people out, and that's the nature of for-profit health insurance. Now, the pieces of this bill that are unpopular have are incredibly unpopular uh, because of the way that this system is set up, the way that the entire bill is set up. So you're going to have uh, no cost controls. You're going to have uh, rising premiums. You're going to have people that cannot afford coverage. And you're going to have a mandate that gets people pissed. So passing that as off as a Democratic plan, well, again, since it is a conservative plan, it is a for-profit plan, it's going to make a lot of people pissed. And the Republicans capitalize on that. Because since it is their plan, they knew all the weaknesses of it, and they knew how to exploit it. So over the eight years of President Obama's presidency, his, his term, they hammered Obamacare and they hammered the Democrats over Obamacare. And guess what? People's dissatisfaction with this law led to a lot of losses in the Senate, in the House, and eventually the presidency. Even uh, President Trump railed against Obamacare, said he would actually do something better. This allowed uh, this whole bill allowed Republicans to successfully campaign and win on this very issue. Now, if we had passed an actual left-wing progressive plan, Medicare for all, then I can guarantee that most Americans would have been very, very happy with their health care, and we wouldn't have bills like Trump care, and it's very, very likely that a lot of those legislative losses from the Democrats would not have happened, and right now we would be under a President Bernie Sanders or something. And I know that part is a stretch, but at it, the same time, it's possible that at least Donald Trump and the Republicans would not be in charge because, again, that was one of the major things that the Republicans were rebelling against. Our health care is too expensive. We can't afford this. So, it, look, the, the whole point is when you do progressive policies, 
Turns out in most cases you win because those, ca those policies happen to be incredibly popular. Who knew? <laughs> but people like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Harry Reid, all the people who went against Medicare for all or even a single payer system, or I'm sorry, even a public option, uh, they're the reason that we're in this mess to begin with. Corporate Democrats say ignore the will of the voters that continue getting campaign donations from health insurance companies and big corporations are the reason that we're in this mess. They're the reason that we couldn't get progressive policy in the first place. And so when we go with this right wing Romney care bullshit, that gets people very, very unhappy and they want to they want to buck that system. That's why there's such a big anti-establishment wave. And unfortunately, the Republicans are incredibly establishment. Donald Trump is the establishment. And he was never meant to change any of this. And look, this is why these Democrats, they're going to get a primary. And maybe from the Justice Democrats, maybe from another group. I don't really care who, right? As long as it comes from the left. She's going to get a primary. So, look, she's in California too, by the way. Now, California is debating its own single-payer health care bill right now. And it turns out that her position is not the position of her constituents and of most Americans who want a national single-payer health care plan. And to that, I say, if you're not going to do what your constituents want you to do, what they voted you in to do, well, then you got to go. Help us endorse single-payer or get the hell out of the way. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.